Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at the data viewer client side web part for SharePoint Online and also for Microsoft Teams. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the data viewer client side web part onto a SharePoint modern page. And uh, we're going to add not just one instance, but two instances of the uh, product so we can display some data, but also connect the data together to reflect a one to many join uh, with inside a back end database. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is configure the first data viewer and we'll do that by clicking onto the configure button. And that will launch the configuration dialog of which there's four different tabs. And the first tab is allowing me to select the type of data source that I want to connect to. And as you can see in here, we can connect to SharePoint lists that may reside in different sites uh, or, or even different site collections. Uh, we can also connect to business connectivity services and uh, connect to a, an external content type. Uh, we also have things like OData and SQL Azure databases, Microsoft Excel, and also other web parts that may appear on the page. And that includes uh, things like our Lightning Conductor web part, um, or also other data viewers as well. So you can actually connect to one of those sources and bring that data in, in order to be able to build uh, a grid view of that data with conditional formatting, um, or also build a chart as well. And we're gonna do both of those things uh, with inside this video. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is just uh, connect to an OData service. So we're going to select the OData service and you'll see here that we've got two different uh, display providers. So we can either, as I mentioned, display the data with inside a grid view, in which case we can add the columns that we want to see and uh, add things like uh, conditional formatting and grouping and things like that. Um, or we can also build a chart as well. And that includes things like uh, multi-series charts that may contain things like lines and bars. Uh, columns, area charts, uh, and even uh, pie charts and, and so on. So um, we'll start off with a grid view. And um, after just a, a few minutes, we'll, uh, we'll switch to building a chart. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to the data source. And this tab here will change, obviously, depending on the type of data source that we're connecting to. So if we're connecting to a SQL Azure database, it's going to prompt us for the uh, connection details to that SQL database. Um, here I am uh, with OData, and what I'm going to do is just simply paste in an OData service URL. And we can handle credentials and so on if you need to authenticate uh, with the OData service. I don't in this case, uh, so I'm just going to hit load entities. And that will bring back all of the different entities uh, from that OData service. And uh, we're going to connect directly to some tables in this first instance. So I'm going to go and grab the suppliers table. And as I navigate to the columns tab, notice that we can go through and select the columns from that table that we wish to see here inside our uh, view. So uh, we've selected some of those. We can also do some formatting, some data formatting, uh, not too relevant in this case, uh, but if we had things like date, time fields and things like that, we could um, make sure that they're formatted correctly. Uh, we've also got grouping uh, that we can apply here as well as uh, colors and formatting. And there's a few more properties as well behind the scenes, uh, things like column aliases and things like that, that we can go through and set. So if we wanted to maybe add some spaces into the, some of these display names, uh, we could do that. And uh, I'll show you more of the conditional formatting uh, shortly with inside this video. Uh, we've also got things like uh, the, the headers, which of course we can show. We can also make those headers sticky. So there's a few different properties around that. Um, and also things like uh, pagination. So we're not taking up too much of the page. Uh, we can add some pagination controls uh, to this. Now, also because I'm going to be connecting two different web parts together, I'm going to allow selecting of rows. So that means I can basically select a row and pass the connection to the other consuming web part. So that's it for this one. It's nice and simple. We're just going to hit save on that. And notice in here, we've now got our data. Uh, you can readjust the columns and, and so on, uh, depending on how you want those to be displayed. And um, Notice we've got the pagination here with the 25 suppliers per page. And also I have that ability to select rows as well. So the next instance of the web part I'm going to do is going to be very similar. I'm going to connect to an OData service uh, again with the grid view and we'll drop in the same service URL and we'll load the entities. Uh, but this time I'm going to grab the products table and select the columns from that products table that I want to show. Uh, so in here, we'll have uh, things like the product ID, the product name, the supplier ID, uh, which is important here because we're going to consume that. And we'll also have things like unit price, units and stock, units on order uh, from those products as well. And uh, 
the one thing I'm going to show you here is I'm going to go into the supplier ID, click onto the filter icon, and we could um, just simply specify the supplier ID that I want to display, but I can also click this icon here as well, which allows me to connect to another data source. So we can go through and connect to things inside my page environment, like query string uh, variables. We've also got things like the current user and things like that that we, we may want to filter by. Um, but uh, I'm going to connect to the other instance of the data viewer and choose rather than all of the items, uh, which would be useful for displaying something like a chart, um, but I'm going to filter by the selected item. So I'll, uh, I'll go through and select that option. And then the item that we're going to filter by is the supplier ID from the suppliers uh, table. So, uh, so that's my uh, filter set. Uh, we can then jump across to the display and again, uh, select the different properties in here. And this uh, does become more relevant now. We can do some data formatting on things like the unit price. Uh, so we can set that as a currency. Uh, we can set the units in stock um, accordingly and, and so on. And uh, in fact, with that units in stock, I'm just going to apply a little bit of conditional formatting in here. So we'll, uh, we'll say if the units in stock is less than 10, so there's my condition. I then want to apply uh, a bit of style uh, to this. So uh, what we'll do is just go through and select a little icon that is going to bring that to my attention, uh, the fact that um, we're, we're low on stock uh, for this item. So um, uh, for the moment, I'm just going to click the uh, little circle icon. We'll make it red uh, so it stands out. And we can choose where we want to place that uh, value. So I'll have it on the, uh, the far left. Uh, of the uh, the value itself. Okay, so um, we've got all of that set, so we can uh, we can hit save and notice in here that initially it's bringing back uh, all of the data because we don't actually have anything selected. So we can see all of the the products and the units in stock and the units on order uh, and so on. And notice that you can also select the, uh, the the columns here to show and hide more columns. We can add grouping and, and the formatting and things like that from from within here as well. OK, but uh, what I wanted to show you was basically how we can go through and maybe select a row. So if I selected uh, row one, the exotic liquids, uh, scroll down, notice here that we're seeing the products now that um, exotic li uh, liquids uh, supplies. And uh, you don't have to just select one. We could select maybe just a few uh, different uh, suppliers and see all of the products. And again, we've got that conditional formatting showing that some of those products are, are actually out of stock. Uh, or, or getting low on stock. Okay, so um, that's the sort of thing here that we can do uh, with the data viewer, uh, client side web part. Uh, you've also got um, other things that you might want to add uh, with things like the, uh, the conditional formatting. So if I just clear that one actually for now, and uh, we'll go back into the formatting, and we don't need to always have a condition. Uh, what I'm going to do is just set a data bar. So we'll have a data bar showing maybe 150 is the maximum value. And um, we don't need to see the underlying value. But as I go through and save that, notice how we can get things like data bars very easily as well. Uh, so we can see, um, again, the, uh, the, the value or, or the number of items in stock more visually. OK, so uh, that's the sort of thing that you can do there with <coughs> the data viewer um, and, and the grid view. Uh, what I'm going to do is just remove those web parts off the page for a moment, and we're going to go and add another instance of it. So, uh, so this time uh, we will connect to an Excel document. So I'm going to choose the uh, the Microsoft Excel data source, and rather than the grid view, I'm going to show a charts view. And under the data source tab, uh, this will now allow me to navigate to a document library within inside of SharePoint that contains an Excel file. So uh, within there. The document library will be filtered with all of the different uh, Excel files. Uh, we can choose the sheet and the cell range will be selected for us, uh, or you can modify that if you wish. And then as we go to columns, notice that we're returning the columns from that Excel document. I can go through and select them and, uh, of course, do the filtering and the sorting and so on, as we did before. Uh, you've also got the ability to add a calculated column if you wish. So if there's a value that you don't actually have from the Excel document, you could create that in here. So, for example, we could add sales tax or something like that to this uh, revenue um, within there or, or add some other costs. 
And on the display tab, uh, so notice that we're no longer getting a grid view because we chose the chart option. Uh, so we now have a chart. We've defaulted to a combo chart. Um, they're all showing lines at the moment, but what we can do is go through and change that. Uh, so we could have things like columns for the sales revenue. We could choose a color uh, for the sales revenue and save that. And then we've got things like uh, the cost of sales, which is at the bottom here. Uh, so we could maybe make that a brighter color so that it really stands out. I'll choose this bright green here. And uh, we could make that an area instead. And we can change the opacity of that area and so on. And um, notice how we now get that appearing at the bottom there of our chart. And the profit also, we want to have that standing out a bit clearer. Uh, so we'll choose this um, nice sort of aqua color. And we go and we could again make it um, a, a deeper point if we wanted to and so on so it really stands out but uh, there we are we've uh, we've got that on our page now there's also some other chart settings uh, so notice as we go into the chart settings here we can give our chart a title uh, we can change things like the background color uh, the height and width of the web part and so on as well and, uh, and bits and pieces like that uh, so I'll save that and notice here we now have that chart displayed on our page. So we're actually going to go through and add another chart as well. Um, but uh, this time I'm going to do it with inside of Microsoft Teams. So here in Teams, I'm going to go in and add the data viewer. So we'll click Save. And uh, we again presented with the same web part, which we can go through and configure. And this time I'm going to go to an OData service again. Uh, we'll choose the charts view. Under the data source tab, I'm going to drop in that OData service and load the entities. And uh, we will uh, this time choose a view as opposed to a table. So that's uh, so what I want to do here is just show um, sales totals. Um, oh, sorry, sum summary of sales uh, by quarters. So we'll go through and select uh, that. And when I click onto the, the column here, notice we've got things like the ship date, the order, ID and subtotal. So uh, we'll choose all of those. And here we are, we've now got a, a chart. Um, so I don't necessarily need to see the order ID actually, so I can take that out. Uh, so along the bottom here, we've got lots of different dates um, and the number of sales, which doesn't really uh, present a useful chart. So what I can do is on that ship to date column, I can group by that. And then it asks how I want to group it. So I could group it by quarter uh, or something to that effect and see the sales totals uh, per per quarter or per month and, and so on. And uh, that could be not just uh, displayed here as a uh, as a line chart, but we could also switch to something like a pie chart as well and um, display the, uh, the, the data in that regard. And again, we can uh, change uh, each of the different properties in here, uh, as well as if we wanted to call out a particular uh, segment of the chart, we could do that. And uh, again, there's going to be different chart properties as well. So if we wanted to make this 3D, uh, we could make it a 3D chart and so on and save that. And we've got a, a 3D chart uh, presented with inside of Microsoft Teams uh, very quickly and very easily. OK, so uh, there's lots more to the data viewer, um, lots more uses that you can use this product for. But that's a quick introduction to the product. If, uh, if you want to have a more detailed uh, demonstration based specifically on your needs, uh, then you can arrange that through the lightningtools.com website. Okay, thank you very much.